Hey, welcome back everybody. Mini Son of Monster Palooza. I am here with, if you can tell only, only from here up, I'm here with Ted Smith, Evil Ted. Hi guys, how you doing? We, we, had a, we had a Ted combination. Somebody got their Evil Ted in the uh, Ted foam faber and the foam faber <laughs> and the Evil Ted. So. Um, but Bio Cosplay says hi Ted and Ted. Hi, Bio hi, Cosplay. Hey Sam, Ted, what's up brother? Ted and Ted. <laughs> um, it's funny, when I was, uh, in the before times, working in the movie industry, uh, I was a model maker mm -hmm. for a long time of my time and I started getting the creature effects and I got roped in with uh, Steve Wang and right. those guys and uh, the great late Moto Hata and those yeah. guys working with them and I started getting the foam and they were like so I'd go to the shop they go wait you're, you're not are you Ted Haynes I'm like Ted who no I'm Ted Smith <laughs> and I finally realized there was another Ted foam fabricator but trust me the foam family you do is far beyond my I was just getting my fingers wet right I was just starting to get into foam sticky and then, yeah I was still just trying to get the foam, and uh, but a lot of people always said, and I kept hearing about your name for so long, and I was mostly doing like armor and stuff like that, and foam props and things, and then finally to actually meet you, I met you at Steve Johnson's, I think. Yeah. It was a, a, one of his many Christmas parties. Was right. Like, and so here, here, the funny thing is that... Can we slide you in just a touch? Perfect. Is it me or Ted? Uh, Wait, it's which, probably me. Which Ted? Um, oh, evil. The, the evil one. Evil not one, not the good one. Um... But yeah, it was funny. I mean, I, I heard your name as well. Um, for, you know, it's like Ted, Ted, this and that, Ted Smith. No, no, Ted Smith, not Ted Haynes. And, uh, but we never worked together. No, we never did. Actually, one night. One night we worked together. We were shooting a trailer for a full moon film. Me and Mike Deke had to go to, I can't remember what shop this was. Go on. A miniature had been built. It was for a trailer for The Lurking Fear. Yes, it was Dave Sharp's shop, but it was in Bacoima. Yep. Yes, we, and, I, and I was part of the crew that built the miniature graveyard. And to this day, that shot's amazing. I think if you, if you, any guys, if you guys have the old VHS tapes, there's a trailer for that movie. Did it ever get made? Oh, yeah, no, The Lurking Fear's yeah, made. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's just, we were working on that um, at the shop that Deke was heading up, which was Alchemy Effects right. for Charlie Band. Right. So we were the makeup effects, but you guys were doing miniatures. Right, we did miniatures. And so we had some creature gloves. Yes. And, and I wore the gloves. And with the digging. And, or maybe one, it might have been two people, but yeah. like on the I think, was I, I, think I, was, I think I was either hand. I right. think the gag was the camera was here and we had two hands digging. So the camera is the the POV and I was like the right hand and you were the left hand. Yeah. We were just digging dirt full of like vermiculite and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. That was it. Going through this little this little channel and it looked like you were like coming up from And the gag was being we buried. popped up and we're in the graveyard. Right. And the camera comes up and you do like a whip pan and in the graveyard that you built. Yeah. So that was the one time after hearing your name for several years, I finally got to meet you. And that's the <laughs> one time we we sort of worked together. together. Briefly, yeah. You know, very separately, I built this, you built that. We came together, we shot the thing and went like this. And then we kept kind of crossing paths. Because did you work at KMB or? I did. I worked for KMB uh, off and on for three years. They had me there. I was there on, uh, we did, go, I did uh, Spy Kids, Ghost of Mars, and I took up to do Xena. And a couple of giant spider movie, some other things here and there. But I, I, I really looking back, I was there. I was up and on there for three years. That was probably one of those instances because I I was gone at that point. Yeah. So you and I were kind of doing this type of thing, and they probably said, "Just bring Ted back," <laughs> and they just brought in another Ted. Another Ted. That's what happened. Bio cosplay says Evil Ted already knows I love his work, but I just wanted to say, as someone who's getting into making muscle suits in the past few years, Ted Haynes has been a huge inspiration. Oh, excellent. Yeah, and matter of fact, that's the thing is that yeah, I definitely uh, the project I want to do with you down the road, but but the I gotta wait till this whole plague thing's over. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I did, and what happened was. I did, you and I worked together, crossed over, and I took, uh, after working for, in the industry, doing the creature effects stuff, I took two years off to make a movie. Right. And uh, I don't, if you do that stuff, I don't recommend that people, because people forget about you within two years, you stop exactly. doing something. They forget about you really quickly. Uh, I, I did this low budget film called Guarding the Realm. Okay. And it was about, I took a year to write it, and we shot it in like 30 days, and it was about a year in post, so it was about almost two years. And in the time, I was getting, I was coasting on the money we had to make it, to live on. And then when the show was done and finished, and we put it, got, they got picked up by uh, uh, um, Think Films or something like that. Or, mm -hmm. uh, they picked it up, and then I was broke. 
<laughs> and I was like, I got to go back to work. And the effects people were like, Ted who? What? Ted? Ted Haynes? Like, no. Ted. <laughs> No, the other guy, like, oh, whatever. So I just wanted to do something different. I fell into the prop house, and I started doing props. Okay. And I started working for 15 years at HPR, in Prop Room. Okay. And, again, that was when it was an interesting uh, company to work for because uh, I worked, it was like, because I know in Creature Effects and stuff like that, you guys you get features. I'm sure over time, it, the time has gotten less and less because usually you have months to build something. Right. And when I went to the prop house, we had days and weeks to build stuff. Mm -hmm. It was insane. Yeah. And I'm sure in the makeup industry, it probably happened for you guys too, is that the, the speed just kept picking up, picking yeah. up. So I fell in this prop house and I was there for like 15 years and I was working and making money and I got, I got in a union and, and, and I was doing big shows. I was doing Malcolm in the Middle and Alias and uh, we did, um, we did. Uh, what kind of props are you making for Malcolm in the Middle? That's the best thing about Malcolm in the Middle. That show was so wacky. They would need the weirdest crap ever. They're like, okay, Ted, yeah, we need deep dish pizza boxes. Yeah, but they got to be three inches deep, like cartoony big. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, you can't buy that online? They're like, no, no, it don't exist. So I was like, and we need them by tomorrow. Or we need six of them. I'm like, ah. So I would just literally grab a pizza box, laid it down. And if you guys ever look at a pizza box, it's amazing. The engineering. Oh, the, yeah. Yeah. No, it's all die cut. It's one big piece of cardboard. It's die cut. It folds together. Makes this amazing pizza box. So these, are, I would get jobs like this all the time. So I would take this pizza box. I trace it. I would of course figure out the depth. Make a template. Trace them. Cut them. Scar them from behind. Fold them. And then they'd be done. And it's, instead of getting this gray pat in the back, they're like, "Okay, good. Cut next. Here's what else you got to do." Like what? <laughs> like and it was. No, there's no attaboys. No. no oh, no, you've no. done a great job. Let me give you a hug. It's yeah, yeah. It's like, like no. Okay, great. Go do the next yeah, thing. This looks great. Get out of here. Go. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you what, this is when it comes back around. Thinking, where am I going with this story? Is that when I worked at the prop house, um, the turnaround was so crazy that I would finally suggest, hey, can we just, let's, I was working on a rest, uh, um, rest development. Okay. And there's a gag where a cinder block drops on a guy's head. And they're like, oh, we need to fight tomorrow. And they're freaking out, like, could we mold one? Is there one in stock? Can we buy one and just paint it? And I'm finally like, raise my hand, go, guys, guys. Yeah, there's an anvil up here. Right. I don't know if anybody can see it. There's an it's anvil. Anvil, which is far more complicated than a cinder block. You can see the bottom. And uh, oh. so they wanted a cinder block, and I kept going, guys, guys, I could do this. And my boss goes, will it look good? No, it will look no, like a piece it'll of look, shit. It'll look terrible. Yeah, of <laughs> like, no, of course it'll look good. So I, I finally convinced them. I said, just leave me alone. I just need some upholstery foam. And so I went out, and they, they, here's the great thing working at a shop is you have runners. You just go, I want this, this, this. They magically run away. They didn't come back with it, so you don't have to leave or do anything. Right. So they come back with stuff. And so I had all this upholstery foam, and I cut it and glued it, stuck it together, and coated it with rubber. Sure. And just, and I did it a day. And we, we went out, I got like fuller's earth and dirt and grime on it. And they were like, holy crap, that looks great. And then uh, we were doing G.I. Joe, that wonderful gem. <laughs> that first I worked on that. Yeah, G.I. Joe that. movie. Woo! Um, there's a gag in the film where the Baroness takes a propane tank and she throws it down the street somewhere in the valley. I think they're shooting, shooting in uh, somewhere in Burbank. And the, the guys are like, we can't throw a real propane tank on the street and shoot it, explode. And, like, and they call the prop house and say, hey, can we make one? So my boss, and those guys are freaking out like, oh, well, could we, maybe we could vacuum form one or wrap it in styrene plastic. And I'm like, guys, again. Excuse me. Excuse me. I can foam fabricate that. What, will it look good? No, it'll look like a piece of crap. Of course it'll look good. <laughs> So sure enough, they gave me the time, and I did it. And the, the saving grace was I had to make two of them. And I fabricated them, coated them with rubber. And the saving grace was I didn't have to paint it. I just had to make it. The guys on the set would paint them. Okay. I said, wonderful. So we make them. We ship them to the set. And the prop master, Brad Eyehorn, big prop guy, calls my boss and said, dude, these look awesome. And I said, you're welcome. <laughs> and it was like, all right, Dad, shut up. We've got other things to do. we got to yeah. go, go, go. So. No attaboys. No. So you know, a lot of people are afraid, I think, in, in the shops of foam. I mean, at Legacy, they, they let me do, I mean, I did a lot of fat suits and muscle suits. Right, right, right. It's, it's that kind of stuff that goes underneath. And they're like fine big, with that. A big fursuit right. and stuff like that. But when when it comes to making a character, and, and trust me, I get it. Number one, it's, it's hard to animate these, right. you know, to do an animatronic. Not that you couldn't, right. but it's hard to do that. We, we definitely did a couple of great characters at Legacy that Alan was like, do you want to foam fab that? We did this great Bumblebee from the original Transformers. Right. 
you know, the, the animated one that we dressed a guy, Jesse Gee, who's going to be here tomorrow. Yeah, I saw that. Um, you know, and he, right. he, we took that to South by Southwest, and he walked around in this really great suit, and it was 90% foam fabricated, and everybody was like, you know, like your stuff, you know, they're pushing on it, just going, this is soft. I thought this was like back, <laughs> I thought there was fiberglass. I thought it was yeah. like, no, no, no. And it, I, I think a lot of people are afraid of it. Number one, they're afraid. Is it going to look good? It's going to look good. That's the Is it going to look good? You can really just do this out of upholstery foam or, or L200. Like, well, I call it L200 because where I get it, that's what it's called. Yeah. So EVA foam. EVA foam. EVA. You think it, which is different because L200 is, uh, well, that's something you cannot do with L. You can't heat form it, but EVA foam you can. Yeah. Uh, I, I worked with L200 for so long. It's a little bit more dense, right? Right. And when I got introduced to uh, L200, I'm sorry, went to EVA foam, I was like, my mind was blown. There was so much more to do with it. And you're absolutely right. The big thing with foam is you're trying to explain to people, now with closed cell foam, it's all about sealing and painting. Once you seal it and put paint on it, it'll look like anything. Right. As a matter of fact, uh, these guys right here we brought today, this is um, a night helmet, and this is all... This is a matter of fact, these are the floor mat foam. Um, okay. And uh, Billy Robot says, Ted saves procrastinators. <laughs> 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 it's that the... Uh, yeah, thank you. The... Um, but this guy, oh wait, no, this isn't. This is the, uh, this is the TNT foam. This is the new improved one. First one I made. He it. lied. It's fiberglass. Nah, <laughs> silicone so it mold. It's just once you once you seal it and paint it, it looks like anything. Um, but uh, much with the prop house, I convinced them, but with a double-edged sword because what happened was, I was able to do it so quickly on certain projects that they went nuts. So it got to the point where it went from, can you foam fabricate? Like, hey Ted, could, they just went to. They didn't even ask me anymore. My boss mm -hmm. would take a job and say yes to it. And come to you and go, oh, yeah, we're going to do this out of foam. I'm like, oh, this wait, is what, what you're building next. Oh, we're doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Like, and, it, and it got to a point where the one thing I got yelled at, and I worked, it was the, uh, was uh, one of those uh, doctor shows. Um, ER or something. Something like that. like that. And they had to do a, a neck brace on this guy. And it, had, it had to be a medical neck brace support thing. And um, here's the thing that's so funny. Is they had one, but it was flesh colored. And the director didn't like it. I wanted him white. Like, can we just paint it? They're like, no, no, we can take and fabricate that. So I literally was like, what? So I had this neck brace, and I covered it with aluminum foil and duct tape and made a pattern, and then darted, and I had to reassemble it and clean the seams. And it like, and I was, and I worked in a dirty shop with a bunch of guys working with machines. So I had to make a clean area and wear gloves. And it, and by the time I delivered the prop, my boss looked at my hours and went, we can't charge them. This, this is too expensive. I said, you should have asked me what it would have cost. It's like, well, you, you can do these so quick. I'm like, yeah, when you make a box or a cinder block. Right. But when you're doing something like something that has to be white and clean and has all these contoured curves. Right. I said the original one was vacuum-formed. You could tell it was heat-formed. Right. And I had to make it. So anyway. Well, it's that polypropylene plastic. Right. The real thing yeah. is where yeah. it's molded. and Right. Yeah. Exactly so. But it's it's that kind of uh, double-edged sword. But um, it's all about, I mean, trusting trusting foam yes. to look good. To me, a lot of the times, because it, it can look amazingly simple. Yes. You know, but then you throw paint on it. Right. And it's not just, I painted it white or I painted it like that. You know, like with this helmet. Thank you. You know, it's it's like adding character to it. Right. You know, like there's a there's a ding here with, a you know, a, a bullet ricochet. But it's like the black in here. It's the, it's the dirtiest. Of the, and you wouldn't guess, you know, you would think that this would, you know, it was 3D printed, it was sanded right. and model shopped and silicone molded. And it's like, no, this is... And, and the thing is, uh, the, the, the big shout out to the cosplayers, the cosplay community, was that I spent 30 years of my life doing exactly what Tyson was. I sculpted, I molded, and we were trained to work with silicones and urethanes right. and vacuum forming. So that's how we worked, and that's how I was conditioned to do. And um, I worked with this uh, Asao Goto, who lived in Japan, and he was on the Giver. And Steve Wang was directing the film, mm -hmm. and we had the hero monsters that were sculpted in these beautiful sculpted suits. And uh, we need background characters really quick. And Ted's like, Ted, and Steve was like, go work with Asao, I'll knock out these gossip. So I worked with the, uh, Asao, and he said in Japan, he did all these TV shows, and all the superhero shows like the Power Rangers and uh, Middle Door and uh, superhero characters uh, were all sculpted in fiberglass suits and the hero suits, but the background characters were mostly foam fabricated, and mostly the villains. And he said they had a week. Because they shot the TV show so quickly. Right. He had a week to build a villain. And so I was like, what? A week? <laughs> and lo and behold, uh, we built these background characters. And I learned so much of the technique that you use with upholstery foam. Right. Uh, the organic stuff and doing uh, he would We'd rough up these shapes. We'd buy like uh, long johns, put them on a mannequin and start sticking foam on them. 
and he would start doing like rope for for veins. Right. We took the really thin, the little like six, the super thin, like sixteen inch foam. Right. The super stretching with spray you glue it, stretch, wrinkle it up. Yeah, and, and stretch it onto the bodies and yeah. And that was my note. And then from that, we did a. Uh, this game is video game. Remember the guy CD-ROM? I'm going to date myself here. All the CD-ROM <laughs> games. Remember those things? <laughs> um, we did one called Wing Commander. It had Mark Hamill on it. Yep, yep. I remember that. And we built these background characters. The bad Zeraki lion head character things. And they had these suits on and armor. And we did them all out of L200. Yeah. And my mind was blown because it was on a budget. But these guys were on stilts. And we had to keep it light. And so we did vacuum forming. But mostly it was all foam. And. So I was introduced to that, and then started like, oh, that's super cool, and started getting into building stuff with foam, uh, and then realized I could take the same techniques uh, I did with the uh, building with acrylic and clay and styrene right. and vacuum forming, and just translate the foam. And that's how I went about making this. Uh, my favorite one I brought today to show you guys, uh, old school, I love uh, aliens. Yeah. So I bought the <laughs> M41A pulse rifle. The dog loves it. It's uh, <laughs> Is that the M41 Pulse Rifle? This again is all uh, just EVA foam. Um, this and again, it's all about just stacking and layering. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. the story behind this gun is that I love that gun so much. They made an airsoft replica of right. it. Right. And I was like, oh my god! So I bought I bought the airsoft thing was like three hundred dollars, and it showed up and it was beautiful and it shot BBs, but it weighed a ton. Sure. And then, but the thing was, and this could, weighs a quarter of yeah, a pound quarter of a pound something like that this is nothing and when i held the gun i could actually physically see it i went oh because in the trying to look at trying to build that gun off of the movie stills and pictures is next to impossible so once i had a that's great replica i was able to make patterns off of that and hey everybody if you like this i have these patterns available in my shop at eviltedsmith.com shameless plug but yeah. uh, hey it's monster palooza we're supposed to be selling merch you're selling merch right? <laughs> but that was i started with that and i really loved it i ended up making like the flamethrower and stuff but uh, this one too. This is uh, the gun, and again, it's all. I've had people at the conventions like pick it up, like, oh my god, it's 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 foam. It's all about the paint job and yeah. the ceiling. And this is uh, this is uh, oh, 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 it's breaking. No, no, I, I, I'm usually pretty good at that. There it goes. Um, this was from a Japanese anime called uh, Vampire Hunter D, and this gun. I was telling Ted earlier about why I love this gun. Is it? It's so cool because it makes no sense. It's not based in reality at all. It's like, what the, What do these things do? Who cares? It looks cool. Yeah, it looks cool. But, um, yeah, so I basically retired. I was working at the prop house, and uh, Bruce Mitchell, your yep. guest earlier, yep. said something, and I would definitely want to reiterate, is that we both were so passionate. I worked, Bruce and I met together on, um, we did a, uh, um, a commercial together. We did a, a commercial. Then we ended up working together on Fifth Element, other movies and stuff. Yeah. As model makers, and he had his own personal projects. He was on, and I was working on my stuff. And we both loved what we did. We worked. We learned from working with other people. But after a while, you just kill yourself working on these shows. And then you would add a little elements or something. And then it's just it's gone. You don't yeah. get credit for it. And it, and it's doing it for almost thirty years was soul sucking. Yeah. It was really tough. And I needed a break, so I took a little hiatus. A little hiatus. And like, because the work would slow down, and so when I get time would slow down, I have time off. So I started watching videos. I saw this um, cosplay community and people doing stuff. And kids were using hot glue. Everything was about hot glue. And I thought, you know, they should know about contact cement. So I did a little video on how to make a foam helmet. I, I thought making a pattern and putting it together and it really took off. And people started asking for more videos. And then I just kept making more videos, more videos. And the thing was so funny is I was making these videos and I was learning as I was going because I had an understanding of it. And I started watching other makers and stuff. And it's, that was uh, six years ago. Right. And it's excelled, and it's uh, I've somewhat turned it into a career. If you were to tell me five, like six years ago that I could do this as a living, well, and it's it's expanded so much because it wasn't that long ago that I walked through a Michael store. And it's like, hey, it's Ted. <laughs> I got him right here. I brought him for you. Yeah, well, there's that, and then I mean, so you've got these molds that just came out. So that, what, it's like a silicone material. Yes, it is. Um, the thing was, uh, oh, Michael's. Yeah, go ahead, please do. Michael's craft stores. I was at a convention in Texas. And they came to me um, and said, um, hey, Ted, we were like, we want to get into cosplay and we we're looking for people. And your name kept coming up and we really like to talk to you about having like be the flagship to launch cosplay in our stores. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, sure. And I said, we really like your patterns. What would you like to do? And so I was developing patterns uh, for Michael's uh, and we were having lunch in Texas, hanging out. 
And I was just kind of like spitballing ideas. I had dreams in my head, like, well, down the road, I would like to do like a, like a line of mold. I said, the movie industry, when you work making models or props, we had these things called nernies or greebles. And so right. you'd have a, a silicone tray of all your favorite parts. And it all started with Star Wars. Sure. When Star Wars came out, they put model carts all over these spaceships to make them look cool. So we did the same thing with props and costumes. And so I thought, I want to do my own line of molds. They come back around and said, you know, sometimes we, we, we're going to hold up on the patterns. We want to do your mold thing. And I was like, oh, oh, what? Okay. <laughs> so I had to really... I hadn't thought that far. It was just an idea. <laughs> it was. I had a general idea what I wanted to do, but it, was, right. it happened really quickly. And I learned a lot about manufacturing and doing yeah. good stuff and design. So you worked with <laughs> Michaels in order to produce the... Yes. And the thing was, because uh, normally Michaels a vendor, and I, uh, what it was, I was old school. So I was doing things three-dimensional. I was like laser printing, having friends, uh, having people like um, laser cut stuff for me. And and I was trying to talk to these guys. How do we deliver this stuff? They go, oh, we'll, we'll take your digital files. I'm right. like, digital files? What are you talking about? <laughs> this is all hand-built. And so I was freaking out. And my friend Jake, uh, Jake uh, Shepard, uh, um, better known as uh, Shepard of Creations. Okay. Uh, he's a great creator. He's does all the 3D printing, virtual drawing stuff. And I finally reached out to him and said, dude, i got to make these molds. I need help. He said, oh, yeah, I'll help you, help you. So he came on board. He took all my laser cut stuff and uh, designed them in the uh, uh, three-dimensional program to have them turn the files. And then since he was able to manipulate stuff, I was like, hey, can we do skulls and dragons? So I would sketch something. He would take it, 3D, draw it up. Right. I would sign off on it, and we'd put it into manufacturing. Yeah. So that's how I said. So a big shout-out to... Uh, yeah. Jake, Jake, and the, the Shepherd, Shepherd Creations. So you just had to hand over the digital files. And to, so we shipped, yeah. And the, here's the thing, though. They wanted the digital files, and they need something three dimensional. So I had to make them. We had to print them as well as ship them there. Right. It was very cool. And there's more coming. We have a hero filigree that's coming. And my So I, what's the idea behind what What would what would people put in these molds? That I mean, is a great question, Ted. Um, the, you've the, got this great mold, and there's a, an impression that needs to be... <laughs> yes. Um, there's so many things you can just guys you could do uh, just straight casting resin for all you hardcore guys love casting resin uh, casting resin there's a liquid sculpey is a, a two part little thing you can get at Michael's too it's it's a low temp you can bake it in your oven so these can be baked in the oven liquid seen, sculpey I've never yeah, heard of that one yeah it's called liquid sculpey you can pour the mold and bake it in the oven uh, you can use uh, foam clay the various foam clays push that stuff in there oh okay yeah uh, and the um, some people tell me that it's, uh, you can put, war I've seen guys like Wonderflex or Warbla. There's guys that do like this plastic, thermal plastic. They heat up really hot because the, the silicone molds are designed to take heat. So you can heat the mold and stuff the stuff into it. Right. right. Ice. Yeah, and so well, yeah, you, you make, make really ice cool. Cubes. And also, I've, I've had some friends make some really cool jello shots with themselves. There you go. Uh, Spud Froggy says, finally, a reason to go outside. I'll go to Michael's tomorrow. <laughs> Ooh, what's up? Because he up? started out with you. That was a cool thing. We were walking down the aisle. Uh, Alona and I had to go to Michael's, and there's your center aisle thing, Evil Ted. Right. And it had a lot of EVA foam on there and things like that. So are our patterns coming from you at Michael's? Uh, no, we, we're still in talks about things because... My, I have my fingers crossed because I this is the first line of molds, and I'll be honest with you, I like I like the I like the dragons, but and he likes the dog likes them too. The dog wants the molds. The dog wants molds. Is that the um, I love the the dragon heads, the skulls, the filigree, and the the detect detail. I want I want to make more obscure weird shapes. I have a whole bunch of ideas. Now, here's the question. I'm going to interrupt you. Go. So. You're a kid. You're, right. you're, you're thinking, I want to get into this. I want to get into film and all this stuff. So what do you see now when you're walking down the aisle at Michael's and you've got Evil Ted <laughs> on this box and you're walking, I mean, like the kid in you, you know, the non, non-Evil I, Ted, non, it, like that, the kid in you, what, what are you thinking when you see that? It, I, it, I tell you what, I, I, got, I got into this um, tutorial videos because of 14-year-old uh, me. When I was 14 years old, Ready for this, guys? I'm going to date myself. I saw Star Wars in the theater for the first time. It was 1976, and I saw it, and my mind was blown. And all I could do was like, oh, my God. All I do is I wanted that stuff. And there was no place to get it, right. and there was no YouTube channels. So I had cardboard, duct tape, poster board. I was the, That was the first understanding of, like, combining two things. I would get, like, water guns and stick um, aspirin bottles on them and make them look like guns. Yeah. And I, and I used glue, and I finally realized after a while, you start putting screws and stuff, they'd stay better. And it was just the whole thing of wanting to make and build. And it was like, and that's why I try to tell the community is that it doesn't matter what you use, what's readily available to you. 
is just get your hands on and start building. And that's what now foam is everywhere. So there's no excuse. That's the, I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's just it's crazy. It's so it's cheap. Just, it's so cheap. Yeah. I mean, it, when I started actually making things, I mean, I saw Star Wars when I was nine. Yeah. And then it's like every book I could find yes. on it. And then it was like, you know, whatever clay I could find or Play-Doh or maybe some different kinds of clay and trying to work my way up to different materials like that. But it's like, again, what you guys have out in the world oh. right now versus what we had 35, 40 years ago. Yeah, zero. 40 years ago. 43 yeah, years ago? Yeah, quite easily. You know, it's like, it, it's, it's like, it's night and day. And it's like, with your videos that you're doing, I've done tons of Stan Winston School videos. I'm going to be doing more live stuff. You know, I, I'm dumping all this stuff on Instagram and, and, and YouTube as well. But then so many other people just around the world. Yeah. It's just a massive community. It's like there's no excuse not to make right. something. And, it, and that's the catchphrase I, I've said. I, I just put it on a shirt recently. Is that right. it's, it's the passion. It's the, it's, not, it's, the, it's the passion, not the talent. Uh, a lot, I get a lot of letters from people that always say, I, I, yeah, I wish I could do that. Or uh, I don't have the talent to do that. I'm always like, it's not, it, that's not what it is. It's just the drive of you wanting to make something and just being prepared to fail. That's one thing you guys got to understand. It's not going to come out perfect the first time because I don't to I don't post pictures of my early work. <laughs> it looks like crap. There's, there's a, a lot of garbage. There's a lot there. of garbage stuff out there. Trust me. And so you get intimidated. That's why I said when you see a cosplayer or somebody you really admire and you like, you see the piece, their costume as a whole. It's they have figured that out. Yeah, and it's intimidating. Off camera. Right. Yeah. But when it's all done, you have to realize that if you ever watch what they do step by step, if you see the procedure where they take, it's oh, it's 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 actually doable. It's all this sure. processing. So that's why everything you guys see here, I have videos for every one of this stuff on on the table. This guy and the helmet. It's like once you watch me do it, you get understand of it. And I do it quickly because I've been doing it for years. But the thing is, it's there's no deadline. Do it till it's till you get it right. Do it till right. it's done. Turtle yeah. time three hundred says Ted makes the building process of cosplay fun. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, do we take questions on this thing at all? Were you, uh, when they're coming when in, they're coming oh, in, fantastic. They're coming in. That's wonderful, guys. Um, yeah, when I made these, uh, the molds, I, I, this actually says, these, they asked me which one would I think is sell the best. And I was like, ah. Uh, let, me, let me guess. Did you pick the one? I, I, I did, and I was wrong, so. What would I say would sell the which, best? Which they, they're like asking me, which there's one that's still out the hero filigree, which I think is going to sell the best. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this one. Because for me, if I was a kid just starting out, right. that would be the hardest thing to make. Right, right. It was like a very machined looking part. Like you and I, both, like that stuff. And, I, and these guys, these are my favorite. Yeah, you, both of those. You know the top sellers? What's that? Skulls. Skulls. I, oh, that skulls. Was good. I almost was going to pick it, but I thought that's too easy. Everybody's going to want a skull. But, but I kept thinking, really? Because there's skull molds everywhere. And apparently, uh, they're not. It's like, yeah. what I thought was really available, turned out they don't have a lot of skull molds out there. So. Uh, if I ever do another run, I'll do different variations of skulls too. Right. But yeah, but this was a yeah. There's a hero filigree one that I really like. That's not there's idea. there's one thing I because I follow you on Facebook and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. And then I, I occasionally will will troll on Ted's page because there's a, <laughs> there's a question that always gets asked. Yes. On your your uh, um what what was it the, the foam fanatics foam fanatics yes. yes. So there's a there's a there's a question that gets answered on foam or asked on foam fanatics, and there's a picture. And it's like, I want to make this. Any ideas how to start? And I always go in, because it, it, it's, a, it's a question that actually bugs me. And it's like, I always go in like a smarty pants and go practice, practice, practice. Hey. That's all, always, I always do practice, practice, practice. Because it's like, you have to do some research. You know, there, there's too many people I think that want it handed to them. Right. You know, it's like, well, where's your design? It's like, that's my design. No, 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 that's somebody else's design. Now you have to redraw that break that down how many pieces because you've got so many videos showing how to and you can apply the patterns for this right you can take that a pattern and apply it to a shoulder right to a chest you know because you change the pattern just because you made a pattern for this or for this doesn't mean anybody who's buying the pattern can't alter that pattern right i'm gonna i'm gonna alter that line a little bit and i mean that's what we do all the time all because the time. It's like some of the first things I learned how to make when I'm patterning foam to build shape because these are all hollow. So it's a, it's a hollow shape. It's like I make a ball. Well, so I, that was easy. I, I went out and I patterned a basketball. So I made my pattern like that and here's the, here's the way it looks. And it's like, what if I elongated that a little bit just from one end? And it's like, oh, that's an egg. Well, what if I squish it in the middle? That's a peanut. 
well, what if I do a little bit? And you start how to learn these these uh, these shapes and how to do these things. And it's like you have to you have to take. It's great that you've got the pattern, right. but now learn how to alter that pattern. Learn how to be creative. And if you want to make this super elaborate cosplay outfit, right. now you got to practice. I think it's practice. You practice. It's funny you said it too. Is that that's why I have a lot of basic patterns in my shop. I have like a chest piece, female chest piece, uh, shoulders, half dome, horns. Like I got very similar shoulder patterns. And if you can buy a pattern of something I have looks close to what you want, get it and alter it and change it to get to where right. you want it to look like. That's the thing. It's always it's it's. I want people to think outside the box. Absolutely. Yeah, it can't it can't get handed. There's a question. There's a question. Young man over um, here with his hand up. C. C. Dawson forty nine says, "Does anyone know the pound density rating of L two hundred?" The pound is L two hundred. Now well, there's L two hundred, there's L three hundred, there's L four hundred, and I know that the, there used to be L six hundred. There used to be, and the higher the number, the more density. The more dense. dense yeah. uh, I, I don't know what the numbers mean. I've asked them at Atlas Foam, where I pick up my phone, and they say that's just what we call it. Yeah, that's always, the higher the number, the more dense it is. I don't yeah, know what the poundage is on it. it. No, not really. My other thing too is that I, when I go grab foam, I touch it. And that's why TNT cosplay. I like their foam because it's dense. It's it's really dense, and it just holds pattern and holds. And when you heat foam, it holds it shape really well. So just the density of that, I'm sure they could give me a number, but um. that's the thing. I mean, I I always talk about L200 and L300. Those are mostly what I use for building like these heads and things like that. It's because of what I know. You know, th this is the this is the material I've been using for decades now, and I use it because Atlas Foam is truly a few miles down the road. Right. But if TNT Cosplay <laughs> is out there watching, you know, give me a call. I'll give you my address. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's funny you said because when I worked um, in the movie industry, that's the reason why I started with L2, it was really available. Right. It was everywhere. In every shop I worked at had it. But once I started getting it in the EVA phone and then to see, and for armor making, like making this gun, this is what made this stuff doable is that there's a lot of stuff on this gun, like um, like the little slots here on the side on the clip, there's a little slits and that's a little trick where you just take an X-Acto blade, cut the foam and heat it, it shrinks and makes it look crisp right. line. And, uh, so that's the thing we're talking about too, like with L200 versus like these EVA foams. Um, the reason you, and I've used some of the EVA myself, but it, it's more sandable. Right. It's more, you know, once you, it, it's, it's, it's tougher, you know, it's more dense. Right. But the thing is you can sand that a little bit. Beautifully. L200 will sand, but it, fuzzes. but it fills up and fuzzes and then and you got to take a burner. You, you got to yeah, do it. That's like kind of like. And I take my hand and I'll, I'll hit it with a heat gun and I'll, I'll smooth it with it's my hand. It's funny, in my earlier videos, I used a torch all the time because yeah. I was using, a, I was so trained from using L200 for so long that when I started doing my booth, if you notice through the, my newer videos, I don't pull the torch out anymore. Yeah. It's just a heat gun and a rotary tool and a sanding stone. Right. Because I hardly ever need the uh, Jeez, torch. you got to watch your videos. Yeah, you got to watch the <laughs> <laughs> Don't think that I have it. It's funny because, you know, it's like I, I've talked several times now about painting and things like that. I'm and, still painting. I'm still and it's like, oh, Yeah, that's right. I, I, I'm part of the Stan Winston School community, and I've done these tutorials, and, you know, I've got a subscription online. It's like, oh, you know what I should do is i got to paint this thing. I'm going to go online and look how Steve Wang paints stuff because he's got tutorials there. Why wouldn't I do that? Yep. Or it's like, oh, I wonder how Ted's done that before. And I look, it's like, yeah, that's close to what I was thinking. Oh, that's interesting. I like that. But it's the same thing if you and I have been working in the shop next to each other. Because like I'm that's using, how I learned half my stuff. I'm using yeah. this thing. You're using something else, right. and you're saying, "Oh, I can apply what you're doing to what I'm doing, and I can take what you're doing and apply it to what." I, it's all that cross pollination of like techniques and tools and things like that, and that's what I'll, I'll, I miss in the shops, you know. And I was at Legacy for 15 years, and oh I was my god, kind of, at the same time I was the prop house. There you go. So years. I mean, but then when you're kind of like in your own bubble, right? It's hard to step out of you know to learn new things when you're still. You know, right. it's why I used L200 and L300 for like the longest time because it's like it's right down the street. What you got, David? Have either of you tried to use a face mask and there's an emoji of a sick person with the masks we're all wearing now as the base for a pattern? Uh, as the base for a pattern? For a pattern? Uh, generally, yeah. I have a. I made some foam mace patterns for my uh, in my shop. I had some generic kind of like patterns. I want to make more, but yeah, just kind of the basic shape of something. Oh, I was making one out of foam to make it a little bit more interesting, but um, I have it. I just, but I know there's so many people making them. It's like uh, Mario Torres is uh, 
is making some great masks. That they're sculpting. Oh kind of yeah, so there's one that looks crazy. like the Predator mask. That yeah, it was hysterical. People are doing there, some funny stuff. A lot of people are making the, the uh, leather. The leather workers are making the uh, face hugger mask. Right, right. The, huh. With the fingers, around. it's so awesome. Yeah. And I bought the pattern just with the intention of making it out of foam. Uh, this young woman. That's uh, if you guys do like a leather. If you look on uh, do an internet search, you can find her, and she sells them on Etsy. I've seen them. Yeah, they're, they're, they're great. Su they're super it's cool. Fun. Yeah, they're really yeah. cool. Um, I don't know if I want to wear leather. All day. Yeah. I saw a guy on one of the, I, I'm a huge Indiana Jones fan, and I saw a guy had done one out of a similar lambskin leather, like the Indy's jacket is. And it's like, why would I want to put leather across my face? <laughs> it's like, it looks neat, but there you go. We've got 10 more questions coming. Oh, man. oh wait, no, 10 well, more minutes. minutes. There you go. Oh, really quickly, guys. Um, again, for everybody who's just watching, where you guys can find me, you can definitely have my website, eviltedsmith.com. And I have a YouTube channel uh, called the Evil Ted channel. And I'm also on Instagram. I think it's Instagram. It's a Evil Ted underscore channel on Instagram. Uh, you just go to my uh, web page. I have all the links there. Uh, I, guys, just you can do, do a it. Google search for Evil Ted. But do me a big favor, guys. Get on my website. Get on my mailing list. If you guys want to see the history of my movie work, I have all my props and pictures and things. I've I have a complete list of movie inventory stuff on my resume. But, um... Please go to my website, get on my mailing list so I can tell you what, what's going to be happening next. And uh, uh, I have slowed down a little bit during the pandemic uh, on my build stuff, but I got some new stuff coming up because I'm really pumped about the uh, the cyberpunk game coming out. So cool. I got a lot of cyberpunk stuff I'm working on. So I remember, too, one of the first times I remember hearing your name, it was from Mike Deke. Oh. And I was working at John Beekler's shop, and I was really super new there. And I think you guys were either just rapping or still sort of working. And I tried to get in on it, and I just couldn't. Mandarin? It was uh, Kung Fu Rascals. Oh, Kung Fu <laughs> So this, Oh, my Kung, God. Explain what Kung Fu Rascals is. You know, we've got a few minutes. Uh, Kung Fu Rascals was my first feature film to work on with Steve Wang's ambitious feature film shot on Super 8 millimeter film. It was it's, and all on the DL. It was, yeah, there and, were no permits. No, right? you know, it was no. all super low budget. He shot this. He had this really ambitious idea, and we met at Ted Ray's where we were doing Tales from the Dark Side the movie. And I met. There was Steve. another Ted. Yeah. What? Uh, Ted Ray. And so he was doing visual effects. I met Steve as he was sculpting the gargoyle for Tales from the Dark Side, and K and B built the full size gargoyle. Right. Uh, I did the miniature uh, New York landscape for that shot. Steve and I met, he was, and I saw a trailer, he, shot, he showed it at the shop. I was like, I turned to him and went, this is amazing, I want to be a part of it. And I never forget Steve's look on my face. He was like, yeah, okay. Because I think Steve gets it a lot, but people was like, I want to really be a part of something. I like, help you with this film. And then most people find out it's work, or they show up, they kind of jump out. And so right. uh, I kept coming, I said, yeah, I want to do it. So he'd say, well, we're going to do this, do that. I show up, and I think the, the going joke was that we just kept showing up. And so... Yeah, that was it. You were in creature suits in that, right? Yes, I was the bamboo man. I was the made of Spartan. <laughs> and I was the frog. And I was one of many ninjas. And I had my ass kicked repeatedly over and over again. <laughs> Thank you, Steve Wang. <laughs> one last question. Have you guys ever collaborated on a prop or costume for a movie or con? No, but Ted and I have been talking about wanting to join forces here with his, like, you know, basically like hard fabrication and then my soft fabrication, you know, creature more organic stuff, and and put these two together in a in a world. So yeah, yeah we're definitely gonna con we'll uh, do something. Combine on something. Absolutely. Yeah, once the plague is over or something, yeah. we'll figure something. Out. <laughs> we will. Guys, thank you so much. Yeah. Please. This, this is, is awesome, great. Ted. We're gonna take another break. Ted Ted Smith, Evil Ted. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Thanks. I for appreciate having me. it. Uh, uh, welcome to the booth, dude. I'm, can I show you quickly? I yeah. want to see. I want to see these up. I watched him build this. These are so awesome. These are so awesome. Thanks, awesome. And he's not even done. Awesome. There's a lot more to go on Evil uh, Angry Fish Guy. So, <laughs> All right. We're going to take a little break, and we'll be back. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>